Hi there, so welcome back to our channel. And now on your screen, we have a circuit, which is uh, called as current meter circuit. So we are trying to analyze how this circuit behaves. So this is all MOSFET transistors, current reference or current meter circuit. So what you have is a voltage source V plus, and from that I have this constant current source I reference, or it is also my input current source I in. And I'm assuming this current source it behaves in such a way that it provides a constant current I irrespective of the variation in the load and also irrespective of the voltage that is developed across it. So that is how this uh, current will stay constant irrespective of the uh, voltage across it. And it is also independent of the changes in the temperature, changes in the load. Uh, uh, so that's how I, I, I call it. So for example, if this V plus changes, the I reference still remains constant as shown by this curve, okay? Now this current is uh, given to the transistor M1, which is NMOS transistor which is uh, biased. So NMOS is indicated by this arrow direction here. Let me figure out all the NMOS transistors and the PMOS transistors are this too. So before that, we come back to our discussion here and we say that MOS transistor M1, which is diode connected where it's drain terminal and the gate terminal are shorted together. So it behaves, it has a quadratic relationship between the drain current and the applied uh, electric field, which is the VGS. And it's a function of uh, voltage applied at the gate and the source. So I reference, I would say is basically ID1. So this is my ID1, let's call it ID1. And uh, Obviously, the IG, this current which is flowing into the gate is equal to zero because uh, gate acts, uh, there is a MOS transistor, metal oxide semiconductor. So you have this uh, metal, then you have oxide, and then you have semiconductor. So the oxide is a perfect insulator uh, where you apply a gate voltage on the metal uh, to invert the channel and to make the MOS transistor conduct. So ox due to oxide, you don't have any current that is flowing from gate inside the transistor. And similarly, IG2 for the M2 is also zero. Now here are the pins of this transistor. I drain source and the gate. And we assume that if the transistors are perfectly symmet uh, same. They have same type, M1 and M2 are same. So we'll say that uh, the current, the current ID1 is mirrored into the second transistor M2. And therefore we will also say that ID1 is equal to ID2 <laughs> right here. Now, because we force the input current I reference into the transistor M1, there is a production of the voltage, which is called as VGS. And this VGS1 is equal to VGS2, because the same voltage applied across the transistor 2 also. And therefore, and th because of that only, you have the currents matching to the input current. Okay, now you see, I am using the same voltage that has been produced at the gate to bias another transistor NMOS, which is M3. And I would say this is my voltage reference, which is coming right here. So it's basically a voltage reference, which is acting as VGS3. So I would also write here, VGS1, VGS2, 
and VGS3 are same. And they are, that is all equal to VGS. And the effect of that is ID3 is the current that will flow from drain to source in the transistor is also going to be equal to the initial current that is ID1, ID2 and ID3. Now, this transistor is uh, acting as a current sink because there is a current direction. Look at the current direction. It is receiving the current from another pair of transistor, MP1 and MP2. This dual pair acts as a current mirror because the transistor current in one transistor is mirrored into the current into the another transistor. M1 and M2 here also, this transistor pair acts as current mirror. Okay. So this is also the transistor M1 and M2. You can see that that is also is available to sync the current ID2. If you connect something from here, then for example, that uh, that current is coming from V plus or whatever, then it will come like that. It will act as a current sink. Okay, so we move forward now and we see that uh, we see that uh, we have this uh, another pair MP1 and MP2. Now they are PMOS transistors. This is PMOS transistor and this is also PMOS transistor. So here are the pins source as the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of current. This is a gate pin and this is the drain pin. Similarly, this is your source pin, this is your gate pin and this is your drain pin. And what you see here, ID3 is actually uh, flowing there and this MP1 is also diode connected. So diode connected transistor means their drain and gates pins are shorted here also in this case. So therefore they will both always be acting in the saturation region. Saturation region means your transistor curve. They, the transistor will operate to the right of this line. Okay. And this is your ID. This is your VDS and this is your VGS. So this is the saturation region. Okay. And uh, since uh, we say that this is the saturation region and the MP2, because the source voltage are connected to the common supply that is uh, VDD and the voltage at the gate is also same, the voltage at this node will also try to be equal to voltage at this node. And therefore, the current in MP1 will get mirrored into current into MP2. So finally, you if you call it like ID3 and here is your ID4. So ID4 will also be added here, ID4. Finally, you can say that uh, uh, this ID4 can also be called as I out. For example, this is an output current and therefore you can say that output current is equal to input current. That is the final expression. So this is how you can see from simple current reference and current mirror. So there are two terms here. Current reference is this one and current mirrors is the configuration of the MOSFETs or BJTs also. You use that combination to generate many current sources or sinks. Okay. So hope you like and understood the basic equation and the circuit analysis. The This part was to help you understand how to do the circuit analysis for our case. So if you like this video, click the like button, subscribe and comment uh, on the videos by what you like and what you don't understand. And we'll try to provide more insights into that. Till then, stay tuned. Wish you happy learning.